Father God, I need more. Our church needs more. My family needs more. I want more. I want more hope, more joy, more peace, more love. I want the fullness of life that Jesus offers. Father, saturate my soul with your spirit so that I overflow with Jesus. I want more. But I confess I'm full of everything but Jesus. I've loaded my mind with so much noise that it's weary and worried. I've heaped stuff upon my soul that's left little space for the spirit who truly satisfies. I filled my time with my own agenda. I'm full, but it's not you. Something has to go. I'm bringing you everything, not you, that fills me up. I open my hands in a posture of surrender. Empty me. The noise, the distractions, the clutter, the fears, my attempts to control, my bitterness, my wounds. The burdens I've tried to carry on my own. My attempts to control, my stuff, even me. Empty me of me. With open hands, I surrender everything, not you. Empty me so you can fill me with joy and peace that overflows in hope. Empty me so you can saturate my soul with your spirit. Empty me so I can abound with the life coming from your hand. Fill us so full that we can't help but overflow with Jesus. Fill our families with your presence. Fill our neighborhoods with your love. Fill our valleys with the knowledge of your glory. Fill us so full that we can't help but overflow with Jesus. Amen. Hey, welcome to uh, CWOW, our CWOW Week and CWOW Recording. And, and for those of you at Calvary who are listening to this on Saturday or Sunday, man, I hope you take the opportunity to get out and pray for your neighbors. That That's really our focus this weekend for uh, Church Without Walls weekend is is pray first, get out and pray. We're in this season, heading into this season of prayer and fasting, and uh, man, we just wanna take every opportunity to do that. So so thanks for joining us. I'm here with uh, my good friend, Harold. We've we've been uh, in ministry together for a little while. Um, a little it, it goes fast, but a little while. And and uh, we're, we're gonna have a, a conversation, um, and, and, uh, but I wanna, I wanna start with just, I, probably everybody out there knows you as, as much as they know me, but I'm gonna start with just a little bit of kind of rapid fire questions to okay. kind of introduce yourself. So right. you ready? So I'm ready. So first question is, how in the world can you be a pastor and not drink coffee? Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a part of what I gave up for the fast. <laughs> but you've never, no, never drank coffee, I've, right? I've never, and I don't dislike the taste of coffee, but I've just never been a, a coffee drinker. I just can't understand uh, that. Only one season when I he needed to stay awake at night, oh, yeah? I used to drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. But other than that... How long a season was that? Uh, for about a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. And I've, I, I recovered well. So I was a football player in college. Yeah. You were a basketball player. Yeah. Just give me one of your best basketball moments. Oh, one of my best basketball a moments. A game where yeah. you erupted. Yeah, I got for... in as a substitute, and uh, I helped us win the game. By, yeah. Re, you know, rebounding and blocking shots. And, was that your you forte, know. was rebounding? Yeah, I well, I could jump. Yeah, oh, you could jump. Okay. Yeah, I could jump. I could uh, because I played center, and if you think about a six-four center in basketball, yeah. is not a great way to make a living. Yeah, but I was able to do that, and and, and but it also was great ago, That was pretty tall. A hundred years ago, <laughs> <laughs> and it's but back but back back when I played, it wasn't. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, how many years in ministry? I've been uh, a pastor in pastoral ministry for about 45 years. Wow. Uh, I've been the senior pastor uh, at Unity. I was a serving pastor, assistant pastor, like I say, about 45 years. But I've been a senior pastor for about, uh, well, 30 some years. Well, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great, Harold. And, and you've been in this community how long? One place. Yeah, yeah we've been here. We moved here in 19. Yeah. 76, wow. um, you know, church started in, our church started as a house-to-house -house Bible study, and I think it was 74. Yeah. We moved down here in 76 and have been here, except for a short stint with a church plant. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, here all that time. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of your best moments in ministry? Oh, 
That's a great question. Doesn't have to be the best one. I know that's hard to yeah. choose, but well, that's a. I think one of the best periods of time. There are two. Yeah. If I can share real quickly, yep. one of the best ones was when I the circumstances I became senior pastor were very difficult. Yeah. A yep. Very challenging time for us uh, as a church, and uh, we were on the verge of bankruptcy. And one of the great things that happened, I remember. Um, sharing the co with the congregation that if we didn't turn things around, we would have to sell mm. the church where we were at that time on Gill Street. And within three years, uh, we went from being on the verge of bankruptcy to being completely debt-free. Wow. Wow. Uh, uh, in, in the morale of the church, God completely turned yeah, things around. That's great. And then the, the second uh, most awesome thing was when God affirmed my calling. Mm. Uh, when I was going through those things, and even much time as assistant pastor, I just felt like I was just way underqualified. Yeah, and, yeah. and when we were going through those difficult times trying to lead, I remember, Lord, I, I just don't think I'm doing a good job leading. Mm -hmm. And I actually said during, continually, not publicly, but in my heart, I said over and over again, Lord, if I ever left here, I would never leave you but I would never let anybody know I was a pastor. Yeah. Wow. And one day after a meeting, the Lord very quietly, uh, and I say, this is when I really knew that this is what I was born to do. Yeah. And he spoke to my heart. He says, it doesn't matter. He, he told me, it didn't matter if anybody could do it better. Yeah. I was the one he called to yeah. do it. And when I heard that in my heart, because it came, it wasn't anything I was thinking. I was thinking the very opposite. Yeah. But when I did, that made all the difference. And yeah, from that cool. point, even when I felt overwhelmed uh, or when I didn't feel like I was doing this as well as I would want to, mm -hmm. I've always known this yeah. is what I was meant to do. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. How many years married? I've been married for 50 years. Good job. I, I headed had to toward stop 51. And think, do the multiple. <laughs> yeah. By 50 yeah. years. Yeah, we, yeah, we got married when we were 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've been, we, we've been married. I've been blessed with a, a, a super wonderful wife, Sharon. And, and one thing you love about Sharon? Oh. Out of the many. I, I love her heart, uh, mm. her, lo her love for people. Yeah. You know, and her passion, her passion for God. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I love the fact that she loves me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Last question. Get yeah. Getting to know us question. Last yeah. one. Just real quick, top of your head, who's the better preacher, you or me? You. <laughs> <laughs> you are very kind <laughs> and a terrible liar. Um, no, I, I, I would, I, if I weren't at, if, it, in if, fact, it, if there was no unity, I would, I would love to be a cowboy. <laughs> in fact, you, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you're part of my, you know, I, I shared during, during the last you know, 30 plus months during COVID, I had three moments of God speaking to me and saying, surrender. Mm -hmm. First was surrender control. Second was surrender the crowd. And the third was surrender your voice. And uh, you were part of the mm -hmm. surrender your voice mm -hmm. because I think it was coming out of that, that um, conversation that we did together um, uh, about racial reconciliation and uh, and and I think even coming out of the sermon series, but it was it was more in the midst of of COVID and thank George Floyd dying. And anyway, I just, I just remember um, you speaking to our people and and just you know mm -hmm. I I think every person at Calvary felt like they had to come up to me and say what a great preacher you were. <laughs> and I was like, come on, God. Well, and and in the midst of that, in the midst yeah. of that though, that that was part of where I felt God saying to me, you need to surrender your voice. Yeah. You yeah. you need to quit being worried about what people hear and what people think and stuff yeah. like that. So well, I I know we're going to move on, but yeah. I think that is I think that is God doesn't need great preachers. Yeah. I, I really, in this season, and I feel myself being emotional when I, when I say this, I think that so I propose, what, what he needs is m people who will yeah. surrender. Yeah. And uh, I think that was a profound thing that he shared with you. Yeah. But I think it's what all, whether we're pastors yeah. or whether we're just uh, his beloved children, um, that's what he, he needs. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we're going to talk a, a little bit at least about, and, and a lot of people use a lot of different words here, revival, awakening, outpouring. R- really all we're talking about is um, kind of this inner hunger that, mm-hmm. that we both have, and not just us, a, a lot of other pastors, a lot of other people, um, people who have been interceding, crying out to God, travailing in prayer for a long time, but but this desire to see a move of God um, take place in in, in our community. Um, so, uh, Harold, what is what is the... I, I don't know if this is the right wor- way to ask it, but we were talking earlier. What What mm. is the the closest you've come to kind of that experience of either the beginning or sustaining of that kind of move of God that was revival, almost revival, outpouring, awakening, you know, whatever? What th- Just share yeah. some of that. I can share two things quickly. I'm, and I, my heart... The, the things I'm going to share still doesn't match what I've read about when God in really places, moves. Yeah. In a, it doesn't a, a match revival. what we long to see. Right. And but it so, was a taste of it. Yeah. First was at the beginning of our ministry, yeah. because our ministry began out of a choir in the early mid-70s. And as Sharon and me... And, and, and just, just a minute, just for people who... I, mm-hmm. I think sometimes it's important to connect the dots and... Mm-hmm. You know, there's this mm-hmm. thing going on or has been going on at Asbury. The last time there was a, a mighty outpouring at Asbury was 1970. It was in the 70s, And that led yeah. to kind of the Jesus People Revolution, which that movie is coming out this weekend, yeah. kind of talking about the, the history of God moving there. So it was, yeah. it was right in the context of that mm-hmm. that, yeah. that your church yeah. was, was started yeah. here in, in State College. And it was a, there was no... What was amazing was no thought about a church, and I was, and and my wife and I, Sharon and I, and uh, some friends back in Willie Barnes, uh, we were just uh, heard the choir and decided to come down and end up joining the choir, which was mostly students at that time. But what was unique and wonderful was the way the presence of the Lord mm-hmm. would manifest Himself in such a transformative way. We were it was nothing to during a rehearsal or at the end of rehearsal, or even a gathering for fellowship when we would pray together to find people coming into the middle of that circle, uh, just turning, either renewing their relationship with the Lord, repenting, or coming to the Lord Jesus in such a powerful way, spontaneously. Mm -hmm. And so that season, and out of that season, is where we went from being a a choir uh, under the leadership of, of Joe Lloyd, to uh, Bible st- house to house Bible study, and then growing on to a church, mm. but it was at the foundation of just moving of the presence of God in the lives of people. Then together, something we experienced s- several years th- later when we made a commitment to for churches to begin to work together, and it was growing. Yeah, and as this it was back growing, in the late nineties, right? It, I think around ninety five, yeah. between ninety five, ninety six. And, and a few years in, on each side of that, we began to come together. And I think the Lord honored our unity in a way that a momentum began to happen. Yeah. We went down to a, a Promise Keepers event down for in pastors. Atlanta, Georgia for yeah. pastors. That was come, over Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. You're taking pastors away from their wives on yeah. Valentine's yeah. Day. That's. But we came back better men. Yeah, we did. And, and not only did we come back better men, then that meant that momentum picked up. We had some large events together. Yeah. And it wasn't about the events. It was about the sense of momentum to serve our city, mm-hmm. uh, the sense of momentum to see, seeing God work. Uh, we saw uh, the, you know, some, some large events at the Bryce Jordan Center. Uh, we, saw, we had a, a wonderful meeting time together at, the, uh, at Eisenhower. Yeah. And it was in that, People were joining the church. The church was, our churches were alive. We even, we were meeting every Sunday night for a period of time. And when we were meeting sun, those Sunday nights, it wasn't just Groups 10 or 20. Groups of churches at one place, at, at one the Assembly place. of God Church. Yeah, and yeah. we'd have a, a large gatherings each yeah. Sunday. So that those are two that I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the, the, that period of time in the, in the late 90s, 97 was the first... Mm-hmm joint service that we had at, at Eisenhower, yeah. about a dozen different yeah. congregations. And and uh, and that was amazing. People walked away saying, why, why don't we do this 
yeah. every week. And and then, like you said, I mean, that's just, we were doing Lighthouses of Prayer with Ed Silvosa, yeah. and people were praying for their neighbors on a regular basis. And a lot of churches were, were growing during that time. And, and then at the same time, we just, you know, God's providence, I, I think, um, but... We had all these different streams of yeah. of church kind of flowing into State College. We had, we had a large Sunday morning gathering at uh, uh, the wrestling audit. Where I'm, yeah. I'm blanking on the I'm, name. I, mean, I am too. On yeah. Penn State University, Bill Bright came in and spoke. So you had that stream, and yeah. and uh, we we had Randy Clark in a healing ministry, Toronto revival kind of come in, and and Brownsville revival came in. With the, those were at the Bryce Jordan Center. We had. All these different kind of major streams of, of of uh, of church life kind of pouring into to state college yeah. during that time, and yeah. it was it was some pretty powerful experiences from '95 to yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's probably the closest that I experienced to a kind of a sustained time for me. Um, I also during that time in the late '90s went to Argentina um, with Ed Savosa, and they were in kind of full go revival and i just man i'll never forget just that there were churches that were uh going around the clock you know not just not just for a week emphasis yeah. but 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 daily so that there was room for people to come in and and worship I, I went to i remember going to a worship service that was entirely led by kids um and and not just like college student kids but middle school elementary schools i mean a high school student preached they they led the worship and then these kids came out and started gathering around all of us and praying and it was it was just it it blew me away and then here uh you know a couple a week ago or so i was i was at asbury with this you know two week long prayer and worship time and again it was just the i mean the hunger of the next generation to worship and this overwhelming sense yeah of the experience of God's peace and God's love yeah. and just the crowds. I mean, I left Saturday morning at 2 a.m. and uh, they closed it down for a period of time and opened up again at 1 p.m. At 1 p.m. on Saturday, I think five to 10,000 people were in line. Wow. And on Sunday, they did the same thing, closed it down at two in the morning on Sunday and Sunday at 1 p.m. There, there were, what I've heard, and I see the pictures and I can imagine it, but there was, the, the line to get in was two miles long of people, and there was 20,000 people on the lawn worshiping, and uh, you know, just the, the hunger yeah. and the desire, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty overwhelming yeah. in, in a really positive way. And, and I think um, that's what our Lord is, is doing, if, if we will open our hearts. I, I mentioned to you a scripture he gave us to read just, I know you all are, moving into a time of prayer and fasting. Yeah, and you guys just, just, just finished. Came out. Yeah. And one of the th scriptures he gave me in that time of prayer and fasting, <clears throat> excuse me, is Revelations 3.20, where our Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open to me, I will enter in and I will sup with him. Mm -hmm. And it, it's based, we've kind of used that scripture more as a scripture for personal salvation, but that actually the Lord was speaking to the church. Yeah. And I think that's in this season, Dan, that he is speaking to the church and he's knocking, not in frustration, but in passionate love, yeah. persistently okay. knocking at our hearts. And when I say the church, I want us to th narrow our thinking down from corporate church to us as brothers and sisters in Christ, to us as God's children. He's saying, I'm standing at the door and knocking yeah. and just wanting us to open. And he says, if we'll open to him, he'll come in. And I think that's where that place of stirring, that he's calling us to commune with him. That di the type of dinner that was, is talking to you earlier, is wasn't a quick supper. It wasn't like a drive through McDonald's. Right, right. But it, what it was, it was a time of reclining and back and sharing and communing and supping yeah. together and receiving. How glorious as we open our hearts in this season, turning our hearts toward him and letting him in. He wants to set our hearts aflame. Yeah. Uh, and he wants to give us a hunger that starts with him, but goes from him to a hunger for the things he's hunger for, hungry for. Yeah, and that is a hunger, not only for us as children, but a hunger for those who don't know him yet, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think one of the one of the things that Lynn asked me, um, having come back from Asbury, she said, "What what do you think is the difference 
there versus here? You know, why why doesn't something like that just kind of yeah. pop up here? And yeah. and I you know I'm still kind of processing that. I I don't know all the things, but I I feel like the one thing that God has has put on my heart is that somewhere along the line, um, there was a. There was a group of people at Asbury who just started paying more attention to God. And, and then more and more people kind of started paying attention to God. And um, I, I was thinking about one of my favorite verses in the Old Testament is 2 Chronicles um, 16, 9, where it says, The eyes of the Lord search through the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You know, and it's just kind of like when you start paying attention to God, um, he shows up, you know, and, and all yeah, this other yeah. stuff happens. But, and I think that's part of, for me, that's part, which in, in a, in a, from a different angle is exactly the same thing that you're talking about. Led yeah. you, you, your church led unity into a, a time of prayer fasting. But a, a couple of weeks ago, I, I preached on Jonah and fasting and revival in Nineveh. And and one of the places that God led me to was was uh, you know in the in in Matthew uh, nine when the disciples of John came to Jesus and said how come your disciples don't fast yeah. Yeah. like everybody else yeah. I mean yeah. fasting was like common yeah. it was yeah. everybody did it every Wednesday and Friday you know yeah. everybody everybody fasted and yeah. but Jesus disciples noticeably did not mm-hmm. and Jesus responded and said you know it, it's it's kind of it would be kind of crazy if the bridal party of the friends of the groom fasted while they were with the groom. You don't do that. When you're with the groom, you you party, you you enjoy. But then he said, but but one day the groom will be gone. And when the groom is gone, then you'll fast. Yeah. And so I've just always had that sense that one of the key reasons for fasting is is this sense of of uh you're experiencing, we're experiencing the absence of his presence and and we want we want him we want yeah. to be with him. And but but fasting, you know, especially when it's fasting from food, probably anything, but fasting from food is just like this constant reminder to pay attention to God. Every time yeah. I'm hungry and I don't eat, I'm saying, but God, I'm more I'm more hungry for you. And and I just I just think if if we would even in our community and our churches begin to pay more attention to God, we're so distracted. We're so, you know, our minds and our attention is is split in a thousand different directions, mm-hmm. and God gets maybe five of those directions, but it's still five out of a thousand yeah. isn't much attention. And yeah. and so when I when I stood in line at Asbury, I mean there are people who had driven eleven hours to get there to just go in for a couple of hours, and people Saturday and Sunday people were standing in line for eight hours yeah. in order to get in, and it yeah. just you, you know Dan. You know, some of this too is deciding to trust God, yeah, and trust His heart for us. Yeah, yeah. I, I like where the Lord is teaching in Matthew six, and He starts addressing the 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 concerns that people have. Yeah, and He speaks to us and He says, "Don't you know that if I can take care of the birds, yeah. I can take care of you." And if I can make the lilies and the flowers look more glorious and have greater splendor than even Solomon himself, can I not take care yeah. of you? And then he, and, and near the end of that, and there, he says, but here's, what, here's, the, here this, here's this prescription, because I know the number of hairs on your head. Mm. He says, seek first the kingdom yeah, of God. Right. Right. And, and I think what he's wanting us to understand, all these things that we're clamoring after, everything that is in the context of his will for us, we're going to receive it, even taking care of us. Yeah. But as you mentioned, we have so many priorities, and he's looking for people, and we talked about even again what people can become fire starters, yeah. you yeah. know, ignitions for what God wants to do in our region, in our area, and beyond. Yeah. It is people who will say, Lord, I want to prioritize you. Yeah. And I think a lot of the stirring, a lot of the moving in this time, when all this is happening even in our world, yeah. is Father wanting to stir the hearts of us as people. Right. And, yeah. says, and, and it's, a, it's a choice. Yep. It's a choice to say, who will 
prioritize me. Yeah. Just best you can. You might yeah. mess it up. Right, right. You know, you might mess up the fa- we talk during our time of fasting. I'm sure here, you know, as you guys are fasting, it, it can get kind of sideways. Right. But I said, who will set their hearts toward me? Yeah. I'm looking for a person. And then that, that person can, can become an ignition for another person. Yeah. And I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as we, and, and you've, you've kind of already shared this, but to just kind of, you know, bring it to a point, um, as we head into whatever, you know, you know whatever is ahead for us, mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of churches um, around the world, but I'll just say, especially in the U.S., who right now, maybe because of Asbury, but I think even more a, a sovereign kind of stirring of God, yeah. I, I think there's an expectancy growing in in, yeah. in a larger core. It's not everybody, yeah. but an expectancy and a hunger growing in a larger core than 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 maybe before. And so, as we head into what we hope mm-hmm. God does, and have been praying God does what. What what is kind of the message on if you had one message to give to uh, your people, our people, um, you know, the community, Central PA? You know, I mean, that's another thing that God is doing. He's starting to bring together some pastors in Central PA. But one message leading into the season. What, what is it? What what's on your heart? I would say I want to look at the camera as I say this. That the move starts with you. Yeah. And we can t- tend to think of these things in big, you know, big things, corporate church and in big, but the, the move of God, the purpose of God in this time starts with you. Yeah. It starts with each of us making a choice because God never violates our choice. Yeah. But it starts with you making a choice to say, Lord, I want you to do whatever you want to do in my life so that you can do whatever you want to do through my life. Yeah. He's looking for people who will make themselves available, who will consecrate themselves toward him just as you are, yeah. just as we are. Yeah. And, and, and so it's an, individual, it's an individual decision that has global impact. Yeah. My decision, your decision to just say, Lord, I, wanna, I just want to be available to you. So you can do anything in me, so that you can, so because of what you do in me, you'll be able to do anything through me that you want to do, right from where I am. Yeah. I think that's the that's that little place. You, I remember again. We talked about the moving God, movement of God in in New York, where the gen, older gentleman told the young man, "If you want to see revival, yeah. go home, and draw a circle around yourself." Yeah. I say, Lord, let it start right here. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for a revival inside the circle. Right. And so I think that uh, I'm going to stop because I could, I, could <laughs> I, have, I have several other things to say about that, but I'm going to wait and I'll, I'll hold on to it. I, I, think, I think my message would be really similar, Harold. I, I, I think, um, you know, it's just, it just take a step. Um, Make a decision uh, of what what really matters to you, and then invest in that. And and if that's not God, then just be honest and say, right now it's it's not God that really matters to me. But if it is God, and and so many of us are saying it is God, but if it is God, then then take a step. You, you know, pay more attention to God and His work around you. Um, I'm, I'm going to start a series. Our, our series from now till Easter is on Jonah. And I think as I've been studying Jonah, I just can't get away from the two times in the book where it says, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Mm-hmm. And the first time it came, he ran. And the second time it came, he grudgingly um, went. Um, but what do you do when the word of the Lord comes to you? What, what do you do when when you're, you're sitting in church and, and there's even a tiny little bit of conviction that there's something here that I, I need to do, I need to grab onto, I need to change, I need to pray, I need to whatever. And then so often we, we just, we walk out and we get mm-hmm. distracted. Mm-hmm. We're, not, we're not paying attention. We're paying mm-hmm. attention in a slight moment, mm-hmm. but we're not paying attention with our lives and our hearts. And, and when the word of the Lord comes, we maybe wouldn't say that we're doing this, 
intentionally, but in reality, we're, we're running. And, and you know, the story of Jonah is that any time yeah. you run from the word of the Lord, you end up in a dark place. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. and so I would just say, man, whatever God is doing in you, pay more attention to it. And whatever God is doing around you, pay more attention to it than you ever have before. I would just also say uh, that understand, I, I think sometimes we need an adjustment in our perspective yeah. as God's children and how we see ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So often Absolutely. as pastors, we, yeah. we speak over God's people and tell them how much God loves them, you know, and how great He wants to be through them. Yeah. But I think part of this being in that circle, starting with you, is un getting the perspective yeah. of how much our Lord has vested Himself in you, and the difference you He the 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 difference the possibility difference that you can make right where you are. Yeah. Everybody. All of you Christ followers, all of us, all you're hearing our voices, wherever God has placed you in your home, in your neighborhood, okay, or, or on your job where you frequent those places, you're not there by accident. And if you could see yourself as our Lord sees you, as a, as a strategic plant by Him to make a kingdom impact, in a world that does not acknowledge God, in that portion of the world that you're in that does not acknowledge God. And if we begin to see ourselves in faith as those kind of people, people who are designed and ordained, empowered and equipped by the living God to make an impact for Him right where we are, right where we are, there are things that you can do in God through him that no one else that's can right. do. Yeah. And I think that's a coming together, our perspective, not in pride, but in humility of who God has called us to be, making a difference in a world that is spiraling down. But you're a lifeline. We're lifelines. There's, uh, he's not come back yet because he wants to have more people saved. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's coming to get people saved, but he's coming through us to yeah. get them saved. Yeah. And I think that's, that's tremendous. Yeah. So let me, let me encourage you. There, there's a couple of things coming up um, that are places where you can mm -hmm. uh, pay attention, where you can make a difference, where you can respond um, to, to God's call in, in your life. What well, one is um, on February 26th, uh, Sunday evening, February 26th at 6 p.m. at Calvary Harvest Fields. Um, we're going to be there together, um, Unity and Calvary. We're going to um, be doing an encounter worship, night of worship and, and prayer. And uh, we're going to pray for the next generation and we're going to pray for a move of God. And um, we'd, we'd love to have you join us. And um, if you we have a meal ahead of time, and if you want to come for that, um, we still got room, I think. Um, that's at five, and we have uh, child care. Um, but the, if you just want to come for the time of worship together, um, that'll happen at, at six o'clock. But if you want to come to one of the others, we'd love to have you register, and you can do that by going to calvarysc.org slash encounter, E-N-C-O-U-N-T-E-R. That'll be on the screen. Um, and, and then the other thing um, that, that we'd love to have you join us with here at Calvary, um, Unity just came out of a season of fasting, and we're kind of picking it up and moving into a season of fasting and prayer um, from now till, till Easter. And uh, if you'd like to join us in that, um, especially those of you who know what I'm talking about but you have not yet made a commitment, um, we'd love to have you join us and make a commitment of that. And, and again, to just register easily online your commitment to prayer and fasting these next 40 days or so. Um, go to calvarysc.org slash fasting, and uh, you'll be able to do that. We, we so far have about uh, 156 or 7, I think, people who have committed to over 5,000 um, days of fasting. Not all foods, some different things, social media, a lot of different things, um, but but a commitment to prayer and fasting during those days. So we'd love to have you um, join us uh, during that time as well. So I'm just going to ask 
as we close, um, Harold, would you pray for us? Pray yeah. for a, a move of God uh, yeah. in whatever way he would want to do that. I'd be honored to. Yeah. Can you one more thing Yeah, you quick? bet. As you, we talked about these two gatherings, well, one gathering to fast as a congregation in Calvary, but also us gathering together in worship. Yeah. As you enter into both of those, it come, enter in with a heart of expectation. Yeah. Expecting God as we come together to worship, we're not. Let's expect God's presence to meet us, yeah. and as we pray together for His Him to move. As you are in your time of fasting and prayer, if expect invite Him in yeah. to commune with Him, and expect Him to meet you in powerful ways. But also as you are coming through it, to be launching to you, you into the things He's moving you towards, the things that the Lord is wanting to do in our region, both in Calvary, at Unity, and in the body of Christ. So let's, let's get, join in prayer together. Father, I, I thank you first that you see everybody who is going to be watching this and cause them to know that you see them. Yes, Lord. You see them at the point of your, their need. And Lord, I, I think, again, remind them that you are the, the Lord of Matthew 6, that you said you will meet their needs. You're able to meet them and supply, even as according to Philippians, the, uh, supply all their needs. And so I thank you for meeting your people at the point of their need. But also, Lord, I pray that through this conversation, by your presence, you have stirred the hearts of all who would join in and watch that you would stir our hearts to, with the sense that there's more. Cause us to be desiring of just beyond the status quo. Yes, Lord. Yeah. But there is more. And that there be a passion concerning your purpose, concerning your will, concerning the plans that you have in and through our lives for yeah. this region and beyond. Yeah. That we would say, Lord, we have seen you. Yeah. But we're not satisfied. We have experienced you personally and corporately, but we're not satisfied. Yes, yeah. We call on you and we desire that you do all that you want to do in us and all that you want to do through us in this season. We thank you for this, Lord. Move by your spirit in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey, thanks for joining us.